hello. Level two NCEA physicists continuing on with mechanics in this particular lesson we're looking at defining circular motion okay so we've thought about uh, motion in the x and the y directions now we're going to discuss it in terms of a circle so if you walked around this circle once what would be the total distance well it would be the circumference 2 pi r so 2 pi times 1 or 6.28 meters uh, approximately okay and in terms of um, timing circular motion, uh, you need to have the concept of the period, which has a uh, symbol of capital T and the units of seconds. So it's basically the time for one complete revolution of a circle. Okay, and we've looked at uh, velocity, at least in the X and Y direction, we looked at projectile motion. But you can also have um, motion in circles of linear velocity. Um, and at any given point, um, in terms of the motion of a circle, uh, that point will also have an instantaneous linear velocity. So I, I think of it as, well, what would happen, for example, if um, suddenly orbiting the, the sun uh, in its kind of semicircular motion, somewhat circular motion, the Earth... Uh, and the sun has appeared, what velocity would it go? Well, it would have a linear velocity of the Earth, and it would be in the direction of a tangent to that particular um, orbital curve. Okay, so you see that here with this um, Ferris wheel. Um, basically, the, the velocity of the, um, the horse, uh, in terms of linear velocity, is going to be a tangent to the curve. So in terms of calculating uh, linear velocity, um, so we've looked at it in terms of x and y, so that's uh, velocity equals displacement or distance um, over time. I guess displacement is more specific uh, in terms of velocity. Um, well, in terms of uh, circular motion, then that velocity, that tangential velocity, will be this time the distance of the circle, which is 2 pi r, uh, which is the distance for one complete rotation, the circumference as it was. And the t capital T is the time period um, for that uh, complete rotation. Okay, so it's 2 pi r over that capital T. So also thinking about the forces involved with uh, circular motion. So there are three ways that an object can experience acceleration. So the object can either uh, speed up, the object can slow down, or critically, I guess, for circular motion, the object can change direction. Okay, so in circular motion, essentially the velocity, tangential velocity uh, is remaining a constant, but because the direction of that tangential velocity um, changes as the circle moves, then it's changing uh, its direction, so it's still accelerating, which is an important point. Okay, and that acceleration uh, is actually uh, towards the center of the circle and we'll explain why in the next slide okay and this is known as centripetal acceleration and it's given the equation uh, ac that is c meaning centripetal uh, equals the tangential velocity squared divided by the radius okay so you can see that little vehicle there going around a, a corner okay they have got a radius to the center of that corner a tangential velocity to that corner and there's going to be a, a centripetal um, acceleration towards the center of that curve. Okay, so why towards the center? Well, centripetal acceleration can be seen by finding basically the change in velocity um, in the circular motion. Okay, and the change in velocity, uh, due to the fact that the velocity is a vector, will only be change in direction. So the magnitude or size will be the constant but the direction changes. Okay, so if you do the vector, you will see at least for the point um, on the uh, Ferris wheel, no Ferris wheel, uh, what is it, carousel, sorry, getting my um, theme park uh, rides confused, will be towards the center. Okay, so the acceleration is always pointing towards the center. Okay, so that means because there's an, uh, an acceleration, there is a mass, there will be a force, okay? So we know by Newton's second law, 
force equals mass times acceleration. That should be kind of drilled into you now. Um, and the acceleration, at least centripetal acceleration, uh, will equal V squared over R. Then you can add those two equations together to give the equation for the centripetal force, which will be MV squared divided by R. Okay, and that's pretty much, uh, at least for level two mechanics, um, all we really cover uh, in terms of circular motion.